take one tile each week to measure in the chlorophyll to see how much biomass grow on this tile. One of the questions we're asking right now is if you had limited money and you had limited personnel, and where would you put your money as a funding agency or as a society trying to fix these environmental problems? What one would you solve? This is a lab where I basically study environmental problems as they relate to uh, freshwater habitats like streams uh, and rivers. And this particular facility that we're looking at right now has 150 what we call flumes, which are artificial streams. We are taking pieces of the Huron River right from our backyard, and we are taking the bacteria, uh, the algae and the small invertebrates that inhabit that stream and we're putting little pieces of the Huron River in 150 of these streams. And then what we're doing is we are imposing treatments, stresses that the Huron River is currently facing such as nutrient pollution, uh, chemical pollution, erosion, invasive species, loss of biodiversity. And we're asking which of those stressors is having the big, biggest impact on things like water quality, the ability of the Huron River to produce oxygen, and the ability of the Huron River to decompose waste and recycle those materials into forms that are less harmful. As you can see, these uh, flumes are probably at best a little caricature of a real stream. They are not necessarily meant to uh, represent reality. Uh, we are obviously missing a wide variety of things. These streams are not big enough to have fish. Uh, they're not big enough to have real hydrodynamics. They're not big enough to have real rocks. On the other hand, what often happens in experimental science is that you sacrifice reality for high levels of control and high levels of replication that allow you to identify the particular mechanisms that you care about. And so what we focus on in this particular lab is nailing down the mechanisms by which these forms of stress, invasive species, arose in chemical pollution, how exactly do those things change biological processes in these highly replicated but simplified environments? And then what we do afterwards is we go to the real ecosystems. We go to the Huron River and we ask, do we see the same results? What we're getting in these unrealistic streams is we focus on small organisms, the microbes, the algae, the small invertebrates that regulate most of the processes that affect water quality. And by doing that, we can have these really small streams but what's interesting, and a, a statistic that may be um, worthwhile, is that we can grow more individuals of algae than trees exist in the entire Brazilian Amazonian forest. Well, the bottom line is that nature is a bit messy, and um, very often the amount of oxygen production or the water quality in one stream is very different than that in another stream. But as soon as I do this 150 times, I not only get a precise estimate of things like water quality and oxygen production, but my uncertainty goes down, and I begin to give you exact predictions about how environmental stress are changing things we care about.